In the last couple of weeks, the government has begun to unveil their new plans to limit the UK's obesity crisis, including banning adverts for unhealthy food before 9pm, scrapping buy one get one free offers, the implementation of more calorie labelling, and potentially even a complete ban of unhealthy food online. This is a major shift from Johnson's previously pretty libertarian approach to obesity. So in this video, we'll discuss what sparked the move, exactly what's changing, and what this all means for the health of the nation and the nation's businesses. Before we get into it, I'd like to quickly shine a light onto our new project, The Daily Briefing. Every day at 5pm, we'll be sharing a summary of the day's news, letting you catch up on everything you've missed in less than three minutes. The briefing is available to read in newsletter form and as a podcast if you want to make things even easier. The link to sign up for the newsletter is in the description. And by doing that, you'll receive the written version and the podcast in your inbox every day. Also, everyone who signs up gets a free TLDR prize, so double reasons for doing so. Just a quick disclaimer on this video before we begin. Before TLDR was big enough for me to quit my job, I worked in digital marketing at the world's second largest food and beverage company, a company which will be profoundly impacted by these new laws. Secondly, TLDR does largely rely on advertising revenue, and with unhealthy foods making up an estimated 50% of all food adverts in the UK, these measures could potentially impact our bottom line. Neither of these factors have clouded the creation of this video, and our normal standards on bias and independence have been upheld. I just wanted to disclose my personal interests before beginning. The UK has a major obesity crisis. Nearly two-thirds of British adults are classified as overweight, with a quarter going a step further and being classified as obese. This number has crept up over recent decades, with numbers beginning to flatten in the last decade as efforts to curb obesity came into full effect. Despite these changes, the issue isn't going away, it's just stagnating, with the House of Commons briefing paper illustrating quite how much worse the problem is now than it was nearly 30 years ago. The same briefing also found the problem spans gender, with a higher percentage of normal weight women than men, but also more obesity within women on average. The problem doesn't affect everyone equally though, with the report showing a clear split when it comes to geographical areas. The House of Commons briefing paper is focused on England, but even just within one country, you can see some pretty stark differences. Unsurprisingly, this obesity disparity also plays a role in hospitalisations across the country. This BBC graphic based on NHS England data shows the number of hospital admissions that were related to obesity in each area of the UK, with some regions clearly having more issues than others. The UK certainly isn't alone in this issue, with countries around the world fighting similar battles against obesity data from the Organisation for Economic Cooperation and Development shows that while the UK's obesity rate is above the global average, a number of other countries are also sharing this concern, with Chile, Mexico and the United States topping off the list. However, the fact that other countries have bigger issues shouldn't be enough to put the UK off from acting. That's because there's three main factors that seem to be driving this current push for health action. The NHS, Covid and Johnson's health. So let's go through them. Firstly, the National Health Service. The NHS is a widely beloved institution in the UK, providing free at point of use healthcare and receiving broad support from the public, with 89% of Brits approving of the service. In fact, even more enlightening, a King's Fund study found that 79% of Brits would support higher government spending on health higher than any other area of spending. In fact, so supported is the National Health Service that 48% of people support increased tax rates in order to boost funding, and only 4% support tax cuts related to the NHS. The problem is that, beloved as it is, the NHS is being put under strain by a number of factors, from the ongoing pandemic to decades-long underfunding and, of course, obesity. With obesity continuing to rise, 876,000 hospitalisations in 2018-19 were related to obesity. And it's clear that weight isn't just affecting individuals, it's also impacting institutions. That's important in any country, but for the UK, who offers completely free at the point of use, tax-funded healthcare, this is an even bigger issue. 
In other countries, citizens can happily ask why their government is meddling in what they eat and drink. And while it's an argument you're clearly welcome to make in the UK too, it's clear that the UK government has a vested interest in this. And that's because the higher obesity rates rise, the more strain the NHS is placed under, and in turn, the more it will cost the government. And while most people are happy to see taxes increase to fund it, there's a limit to how much the government can reasonably spend on health. While obesity makes life harder for the NHS, never has that been more true than right now. That's because research from Public Health England shows that people with excess weight are more likely to be hospitalised because of COVID. In fact, the heavier the person gets, the more the risk increases. When reflecting on the findings, Dr Alison Tedston from Public Health England concluded, Losing weight can bring huge benefits for health and may also help protect against the health risks of COVID-19. The case for action on obesity has never been stronger. Which brings us to our final major factor in introducing these new rules right now, the Prime Minister's health. As you'll likely remember, Johnson caught the coronavirus early this year and was for a time hospitalised and even taken into intensive care. Now, I don't want to insult the Prime Minister's physique, but it's been speculated that his wider health issues may have contributed to the severity of his Covid problems. In fact, writing in the Daily Express, Johnson said, We all put things off. I know I have. I've wanted to lose weight for ages, and like many people, I struggle with my weight. I go up and down, but during the whole coronavirus epidemic, and when I got it too, I realised how important it is not to be overweight. It seems that these three factors have combined and have been the real impetus for change in the UK. The NHS is continuing to struggle with the rise in obesity-related cases, a problem only made worse by Covid, something the Prime Minister experienced firsthand. And these factors combined seem to have led to this new government action, something which Johnson seemed cold to when he first entered office last year. Since 2015, there have been real shifts in government strategy to fight Britain's obesity issues. At the time, David Cameron's government was briefing a new and pretty ambitious obesity plan. However, as you likely remember, in 2016, he was replaced by Theresa May and the issue of Brexit took centre stage, resulting in the plans being significantly watered down. The only real change that ended up coming out of the original Cameron plans was the implementation of the sugar tax, an issue we discussed at the time. In 2018 though, May's government drafted new plans, increasing the focus on the issue and hoping to make some more significant change. However, it seemed that history was doomed to repeat itself, as not long after, May left number 10 and yet again, the new Prime Minister didn't seem all that interested with Johnson asking for a review into what he described as sin taxes. However, following his health care, his attitude does seem to have shifted. In fact, in recent weeks, he's made it clear in interviews that he's dropped his old libertarian attitude to health and nutrition, and is more willing than ever to implement real changes, something which actually became real with the publication of the government's new plans. So, what's actually included in this plan, and what can we expect from the change? Well, let's run through the core elements. The government are launching a new campaign to help people lose weight using evidence-based tools and apps with advice on how to lose weight and keep it off. They're going to expand the weight management services available through the NHS. They're launching an investigation into the current traffic light labelling system used on food in the UK. New legislation will require restaurants, cafes, takeaways and other out-of-home food businesses to add calorie labels to their food, as long as they have over 250 employees. They're launching a new initiative to get nutritional labels added to alcoholic drinks. They'll also be legislating to end volume promotions of unhealthy food, ending offers which encourage you to buy more, such as buy one get one free as well as ending the use of prominent locations in stores to encourage purchase. And as someone who used to work in the industry, you wouldn't believe how much companies pay for premium shelving spots, such as the end of aisles. Finally, they'll be banning adverts for unhealthy foods on TV and online before 9pm, as well as looking into a full online advertising ban. The government's hoping that these measures, taken in conjunction, will significantly help the UK's obesity crisis not only by improving services and education, 
but also by limiting the levers that businesses have to push their unhealthy products. Now, that last measure clearly won't be popular with big food businesses, because they certainly don't want to have their promotional levers removed. Such changes won't be easy on advertisers, or those selling the adverts. ITV and Channel 4 are both set to lose huge sums of money, with just these two channels experiencing a £200 million drop in advertising spending as a result of this plan. This is huge, especially for Channel 4, who's already faced drastic cuts and continues to battle against foreign giants like Netflix, who don't have to rely on ads at all. The ripple effects will spread even further when it comes to online advertising. Sites that rely on adverts already have to sacrifice huge percentage of their revenues to gatekeepers like Google and Amazon, so reduced ad spending will squeeze them yet further. The argument isn't that corporations matter more than individuals' health, just that if we're going to make huge changes like these, which will impact millions of jobs, we ought to be sure that we're ready to help them cope, and that the measures actually work. Because there certainly are some that argue that syntaxes and limits like these don't actually make a significant impact on public health, saying that they place too much emphasis on individuals and not enough on underlying health inequalities. Professor Andrew Goddard, the president of the Royal College of Physicians, said that the policy must take into account biological, genetic and social factors, not just personal choice. Going on to say that there's a risk that we will once again fall into the trap of focusing on individual responsibility. We've been down this path before and it doesn't work. We know the key to success in addressing obesity and other health inequalities lies in shared responsibilities between individuals and the state. It does seem that the government is more hopeful this time, hoping that measures like these can put an end to the obesity trend and finally lead to a drop in the UK's obesity rate. What do you think though? Will these measures be effective? And should the government even be getting involved? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified every time we post. Special thanks to our Patreon backers who make videos like this one possible. And if you want to see your name listed at the end of videos, then be sure to back us on Patreon. There's a link to that in the description.